Okay, 4.6 is getting to the cytoskeleton. Um, and I, I really like the cytoskeleton. I think it's kind of an underrated um, part of the cell. Uh, it's not something that you really learned a whole lot about maybe in freshman bio or, or uh, seventh grade bio. It's just kind of, it just gives support to the cell, pulls apart, you know, some, uh, some chromosomes during um, cell division. But there's actually a lot going on with the cytoskeleton and some, some cool roles uh, that we need to go over. Um, call it a network of fibers. So um, if you think of a network of fibers, that'd be like this idea of the, all these fibers crossing each other. And uh, basically, cytoskeleton is all these protein fibers that form a network, these um, kind of this meshwork, like a spider web that's gonna give um, strength and structure to the cell. But it's also going to be used to um, help organize the cell's activities, and and, and, um, and uh, you'll see it's also it, it not only gives support and structure, but also functions like a highway system that the cell can use to transport um, um, uh, different vesicles that hold maybe protein products or lipids that you made, or it can be used to transport different organelles throughout the cell. Um, cyto, referring to like the cell, cyto means cell, skeleton, like your, your body's skeleton gives your body like support and structure, allows things to like anchor on. That's the idea of the cytoskeleton. It, it anchors different parts of the cell, like different um, organelles to, uh, to the cell structure. Uh, here's a cool like fluorescent, mi fluorescent micrograph of the cytoskeleton, if you're into that. Um, anyways, as I say, give support and shape to the cell. Um, Anchorage for different organelles and molecules. Let me jump to, to this picture showing that. So this is super cool. So here, here's your uh, here's a part of your cytoskeleton. There, there's three different parts of the cytoskeleton that I'll show you. One of the types of um, fibers that make up the cytoskeleton is called a microtubule. Um, it looks like a, a hollow tube. And um, on the microtubule, you can have these things called motor proteins. So these motor proteins, this is really cool. If you look in your, your textbook, you'll see, or you just look on YouTube, you can find these animations of these, these motor proteins, and you'll see like this animation is trying to show it walking. So it literally like will have these legs and it walks around. And then on like its head, it's like holding it. There's a receptor that will then connect to a vesicle um, that will then like, it'd be like me putting a basket on my head and then just like <laughs> walking around, but then I'm my, that, basket is then connected to some sort of fiber that's running all throughout this room. It's kind of a wild idea, but these things move super fast. They're powered by ATP, made that in the, the mitochondria through cellular respiration. And um, anyways, that's how we, that's how we when I said the cytoskeleton is like a highway system, that's what I mean by that. This is like transporting different vesicles or different organelles throughout the cell. Um, and yeah, so they walk along the microtubule, or it could also be a microfilament. I'll explain what a microfilament is later. Basically, a microfilament's a different kind, another type of um, uh, um, fiber that makes up your cytoskeleton. Um, they're showing a, a nerve. Well, well, all right, I'll show it to you here. Well, no, actually, I have a good, I have a better picture of, of this because um, it's important process in like neurotransmitters and nerve cells. Let me make sure I got everything here. Um, yeah, provides anchorage. So, meaning we not only could like anchor, if this was like a mitochondria or something right here, we not only could move it across the cytoskeleton, but we also could have a different kind of protein that would just hold it in place so that it doesn't like float around. Because you got to remember like the inside of the cell is very fluid, kind of um, almost jello-y kind of like where there's, you, you could imagine if like the mitochondria isn't anchored down kind of like how a boat could just like float around in a harbor. You'd want to have an anchor, like something to lock it down. That's what, that's what we also can do um, with the cytoskeleton. Um, we say it's very dynamic, a lot of movement going on, a lot of change. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so getting into three different parts of the cytoskeleton, the microtubules, what I just showed, they are the thickest, right? Uh, so they're the biggest fibers. And then um, um, the smallest fibers are the microfilaments. Also, they're made of something called actin. And I have an actual slide that will show you um, each of these things in, in really very specific details. This is just an overview. Intermediate filaments, okay. Microtubers are the biggest. Microfilaments are the smallest. Intermediate, 
is in the middle. It's intermediate. Um, so it's in the middle range of, um, of, uh, of size. Okay. So as promised, here's a slide going over the microtubule in more detail. So you think of a tube, a hollow tube. That's why they call it that, a microtubule, hollow tube. You don't need to know the actual diameters of these diameters of these different fibers. Just know their relation to each other. So uh, that meaning that the microtubule is the, the thickest one, it's the biggest one. Um, it is made of, um, it's a dimer. So di means two, meaning it's, a, uh, it's made of protein, but two different kinds of protein, alpha and beta. And the protein it's made of is tubulin. Remember, proteins always end, or typically will end in IN. So tubulin, alpha, and beta tubulin. So that's what they're showing here, where the different color beads represent either the alpha or the beta, and they just kind of wind together almost like a helix. But as they're winding together, the inside of it is hollowed out. So there you go. Um, yeah, the different functions. So you need to know that the size of these three different uh, cytoskeleton parts but also like what job they do in the cell. Now, maintenance of cell shape, that isn't, all of these fibers are gonna have some sort of role in maintaining shape. So um, you'd more wanna get into like understanding the actual differences. So cell motility, that's something, um, uh, that's a, a pretty big thing with the microtubules, chromosome movement, and then organelle movement. And I'll, I'll, let me show you some slides going over these individually. So this is a cell that's in, um, uh, doing mitosis. So uh, this is the anaphase part of mitosis where um, you don't need to know these phases. You have to like anaphase, you know, um, the two A's are being separated by the N. So here the two um, sister chromatids are being separated. And you're like, well, how are they being separated? Microtubules. The microtubules will come from this organizing center, the centrosome organizing center that I'll show you later on. And they then pull these apart to opposite ends of uh, what will, will end up being two different cells. Okay. Um, so there you go. And then we talked about uh, organelle movement. Um, I'll show you cell motility a little bit later. But uh, yeah. Anyways, getting into actin. So actin's the, been the smallest uh, fiber. And um, two intertwined strands of actin. So IN, the, the protein that makes it up is called actin. So there isn't two different kinds of like um, subunits like you saw with the, the microtubules. But what you have here is you'll get like a braided rope. So I don't know if you've ever seen a braided rope or like a, um, you know, somebody who braids their hair. You're taking two strands of hair and then you like wind it together somehow. I've uh, never personally done it before, but the idea is this braided rope is going to have a lot of strength. So this actin fiber is going to have a lot of strength. Um, it's also fairly flexible. So it changes in cell shape. So, you know, if someone needs to like get bigger or smaller, maybe like make these weird extensions and stuff, um, that's where the actin um, filament, um, filaments can be uh, really useful for. Uh, muscle contraction cytoplasmic streaming. I'm gonna show you these. I'll have a slide going each one of those. Um, so I'll, I'll just get to that. So this is tricky because microtubules and actin are used in cell division, but they're used at different uh, phases. So anaphase was where we use the microtubules to pull apart those sister chromatids. But uh, actin is, is gonna be used in, the, in um, the very, it's technically outside of mitosis. It's called cytokinesis. So cyto cell kinesis. If you study kinesiology, you're studying like the science of movement. So a lot of anatomy and physiology class. A lot of physical therapists study kinesiology. So cytokinesis, we're dividing up. Um, oh, cyto, I should say cytoplasm. We're dividing up the cytoplasm. And um, so, especially if you're looking at an animal cell, animal cells will, will form something called a cleavage furrow, where this cleavage furrow is made up of an actin ring. So it's just like basically you get this actin ring made of a bunch of actin filaments that will then pinch off like, um, you know, like if you're uh, kind of pulling like a, a zip tie shut or something, and then that will split off like, um, you know, budding off two soap bubbles where they each become their own cell. Um, 
this is also cytopesis in a, in, a, in a plant cell, but it's not, at least as far as I'm aware, the cell plate isn't made of actin. I just thought I'd show you the difference, cytopesis in plant versus animal. Uh, you can remember the difference because uh, animals have cleavage, um, at least some animals, um, and plants don't. At least I don't think they do. Uh, maybe there is actually some weird plant version of cleavage that I'm not aware of, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to move on now. Okay, uh, speaking of muscle contraction, um, this is kind of cool. So how, how a muscle actually contracts to give it strength is uh, there's a bunch of these actin filaments that run all throughout your muscles, and um, it will then link up with um, something called, uh, another protein called myosin, and the mechanism of how this all works is very similar to like Velcro. So I don't know if you ever really looked at Velcro in detail, but there's two parts of Velcro. There's a, um, a softer part, the, the smoother part. Um, and if you were to look at it really closely, it has all these little loops on it. Like if you, you know, I'm sure you have some Velcro lying around, like take a look at it. And then if you look at the other part of Velcro, the rougher part, that is actually a bunch of little tiny hooks. And when you bring the two together and you push them together, the, what gives it the, excuse me, the strength is those hooks on the rougher part will link up with the, the loops of the, the, the softer, smoother part. And then each individual like hook and loop isn't very strong, but they then add up to give that Velcro piece a lot of strength. Similar thing goes on with uh, muscle contractions where there's all of these, I mean, I don't even know how many thousands of like actin and myosin um, attachments that happen in the muscle cell that all add up to giving your muscle cell strength. And um, don't need to know a lot of the details here. That, that isn't really important. Just knowing that's an example of how actin is used in the body. Um, I mentioned how calcium is useful for uh, muscle contractions, showing that there. So remember that calcium is stored in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, anyways, moving on to cytoplasmic streaming. So um, this happens really in plant cells where um, basically it's kind of like the plant cells will hit refresh or like, you know, that there's like a, I guess a saying, I don't know, or like just good advice. It's don't, it, it's best to like, you don't want to like drink non-moving water. The idea is like if water is sitting, bacteria and stuff can grow. Whereas if water keeps moving and refreshing itself, that's healthier for the stream. It's going to prevent bacteria from growing. Um, I guess a somewhat similar idea is happening in a plant cell where, I'm not saying bacteria would grow in this plant cell, but it's just healthier for the, uh, the cell to keep moving that cytoplasm, to keep like refreshing the, um, the environment inside the cell. And so basically cytoplasmic stream, streaming is, you'll have all of these actin filaments running throughout the cytoplasm of that plant cell. And then the motor proteins, I showed you how these things, those are the little things that like walk around like that, they will attach themselves on one end to the actin filament and on the other end, they'll grab onto, um, say, a chloroplast, a mitochond some sort of other component, and they'll just keep walking around and moving these things around. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure it probably has some sort of role in trying to make sure you have, like, you know, the right number of chloroplasts in different parts of the cell. But anyway, cytoplasmic streaming. You actually may have seen this in seventh grade. So, um, at least in Fairfax County, if you looked at, uh, you had, when you had your fish tanks, you had like the elodia leaves, um, uh, sprigs inside your, uh, your fish tanks. And if you were to pull off one of those leaves those fresh elodia, of the fresh elodia plant, and you looked at it under a light microscope, you could see the cytoplasmic streaming happen. You could see in some of them, it actually moving around, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, I mentioned how actin is used in cell motility. So, um, uh, this is just an example of how this would work. As I said, don't, don't really need to worry about the details here, but um, basically it starts off where like this would be like you're a, an amoeba cell or something. If it wants to move, it's going to extend out. I told you how actin is really flexible. It'll extend out a bunch of actin filaments. So it's like extending out with its leg. It then adheres, step three here, um, and then contracts and then it's going to like pull back you know the actin filaments from the other end of the cell anyways don't even know those details just know that's actin can be used in cell movement okay moving on to intermediate filaments um 
So they're in between, the, the in-between size. Um, and they're s sort of a little similar to like the actin filaments where they're, they're coiled together. But um, it, isn't, it isn't like a, a like two strands um, uh, coiled together. It's a bunch of different fibers coiled in the cables. So, and, uh, and these fibers, the, the proteins that make them up. So you need to know this, intermediate filaments are made of keratin, right? Actin is made of um, actin, right? And then uh, the microtubule is made of the tubulin protein. So the intermediate and the keratin, that isn't as obvious, um, like what that, you know, keratin going with intermediate. Um, but yeah, that's something you have to remember. Um, uh, keratin can make up a, a big part of like your nails, like, that, like they're kind of stronger from, from keratin. Um, uh, anyways, but, uh, or maybe it's your hair. <laughs> I don't even know right now. Does it, it doesn't matter, but these are the functions, maintenance of cell shape. Again, all the cytoskeleton components do that. Um, something that's unique for the uh, intermediate film is anchorage of the nucleus. So if we want to keep that nucleus and give it some structure and strength, and I showed you, um, went over the nuclear envelope and stuff. I said there's like the nuclear, like, um, lamina that would kind of, that like spider webby framework that gave the nucleus its spherical shape. That um, framework is made of intermediate filaments. Um, and that's really about it. There isn't as much to say with the intermediate filaments. Um, so there you go. Here's one slide with all of them together. I realize it's probably pretty hard to read, but um, if you look in the slide deck, um, you know, if you want to see them side by side, you can compare the two. Okay. Anyways, um, getting go into a little more detail with the microtubules, and I, and I told you how I want to show you like um, an example of the microtubules with like cell movement. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get into that a little bit. I really have said everything here. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so how do we, you know, especially during cell division, where do these microtubules come from? That's where the centrosomes and the centrioles come from. So um, centrosome is referring to this whole region where the individual um, uh, thing here are the centrioles. So if we're doing cell division and you have like those spider webby microtubules coming out and then attaching to the chromosomes, they originate from the centrosome where within that region, the centrosome region, you have the centrioles and each centriole is made of um, this like triplet, these triplets of microtubules where these microtubules, if you're doing cell division, they can expand out of those and spread throughout the cell. Okay. And there's a pair of them, it's kind of a random detail. Um, yeah, call that region, the centers of the microtubule organizing center. Um, and nine triplets, so here's, here's a triplet and there's nine of them, and they're arranged in a ring-like structure where it's then hollow inside. All right, um, so getting into some of the movement that happens with the microtubules, uh, cilia and flagella, um, you perhaps have heard of those uh, by now. I can actually draw. So this is like, you think of a sperm cell and the tail of a sperm cell, that tail, that would be a flagella or like bacteria, prokaryotic cells will have that flagella. Um, whereas cilia, you see a lot more in your bacteria cells, but it would be like, the cilia would be many smaller kind of hair-like projections. Um, both of them are made of microtubules and they both kind of have similar mechanisms where they like move around like this to like kind of, kind of like how you would like swim with your legs, like flopping them around to, to move. Um, yeah, so uh, getting into some of the details of how they work, it's actually, it's actually pretty cool. So if you're looking at like, so here's like a cross section of, um, of like this sperm tail, if you will. Uh, this my, this uh, 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 this flagella, excuse me. So here's a cross section of it, and um, you'll see here each of these tubes. That's a microtubule. They are arranged in pairs, and we, we call this a nine plus two arrangement. The nine comes from the fact that we have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine 
hairs that are around the outside, and then the two is referring to um, the two microtubules that are on the inside. So nine plus two. This one would be a, um, they call it nine plus zero. Um, the nine coming from, you have, not actually, a, this would be, they call this a doublet. This would be a triplet. You have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine of them. And then zero, there's nothing in the middle. There's no um, um, microtubules that are in the middle here. Anyways, um, there you go. Oh, um, how, do, how exactly do they move? Well, these, they're in red here. What connects the, uh, the doublets together? Um, these are awful, oh my gosh. I, I made the mistake of buying generic whiteboard markers. Never again, not worth it. Uh, anyways, um, Okay, so these, these motor proteins, you saw those are the things that like moved around the cytoskeleton, moving different parts. Well, basically these different motor proteins, they, they move around and the combination of them, of them walking along this microtubule, those combinations of them walking and moving will somehow cause this tail or these cilia to move back and forth. The details are a little vague and you don't have to understand how exactly it all happens, but just understanding that it is a thing that does happen. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's about it here. Let me make sure I got everything. Those motor proteins are called diamonds. So that'd be important to make note of. Maybe you think of Dyson, you know, like the vacuum. Oh, basal body. The basal body is what's going to um, anchor it. So, so basically, you know, I showed you here. I went over like the cross section um, of like the main part of it. But what's actually going to anchor this thing and make sure it, it doesn't just like fall off, or right? it has something to like push on, um, is the basal body. So the basal body is what's going to anchor itself. Uh, well, actually, I talked about the basal body, when I, the nine plus zero thing. The basal body where it's anchored at in the cell membrane, that is the nine plus zero arrangement. So nine plus zero is for the basal body. The main actual part of the microtubule is nine plus two. Okay. Uh, maybe you can remember that by like basal. It's got like the B's and like that. That looks like a zero. That looks like a zero. It's nine plus zero, I don't know. Okay, um, oh yeah, I, I mentioned um, towards the beginning here that I wanted to show you how uh, microtubules were used in like nerve cells. So uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. All right, so if you're, you're a nerve cell, a nerve cell's gonna have a cell body, call that the soma, where you have the dendrites. The dendrites receive information from other nerve cells. And then this nerve cell wants to be able to communicate with other, with another nerve cell kind of in a chain. It communicates, it sends its message along an axon, where at the end of the axon you have an axon terminal. Well, if I wanna get my neurotransmitter, the neurotransmitter is the, the, the message that we use to communicate with nerve cells, with nerve cells used to communicate. If I wanna get that neurotransmitter from the cell body where it's made to the axon terminal where it gets released, you transport it along the microtubules. And so in this cargo thing here, this would be like your neurotransmitters you made in the cell body. And they, they will then walk, those motor proteins will walk along the microtubule to the very end. And um, dynin, I, I showed you that dynin was used, uh, that was the motor protein used here um, for like the flagella or the cilia. Um, so dynin isn't just using that one role. Uh, uh, kinesins are, is another kind of motor protein. You don't really need to know like examples of those motor proteins, but they are just, you know, if you're curious, those are some examples of them. But anyways, yeah, just, just how um, that would work uh, in a nerve cell. Um, let's make sure I set everything for the actin. Um, yeah, solid rods. Remember the microtube is hollow. Um, yeah. 
Uh, okay, yeah, so you're in, inside your intestine, all along your intestine, you have these like kind of boxy cells that will then have these projections. And these projections are called microvilli, where the purpose of the microvilli, the purpose of your intestine is to absorb the nutrients from your food. And so the cells in the intestine have all those extensions and each of those extensions has like the folds like that because that increases the surface area. So if you have more surface area, there's more space on, that, on the cell membrane there to bring in those nutrients. So what gives those, what allows the cell to make those projections, they don't just like fall over, is through the microfilaments. And um, yeah, here's kind of a electron micrograph showing you those uh, microvilli. Um, let's see if there's anything, anything new here. This this example that was like the whole like um, I, I was like showing you like the extension thing with the amoeba and the retraction. That's all they're talking about there. Just showing you the example that um, uh, the actin filaments are useful in cell movement, and then showing you that. Just a slide with just words showing you the intermediate filament. Um, I should have mentioned everything here. Remember the intermediate filament, the main thing to uh, make note of is that it's, uh, it helps support the nucleus. And not as important of a detail, but it's technically more permanent, a little more longer lasting than those, um, those uh, the microtubules or the microfilaments. Okay, so I'll do it for 4.6.